before I get started uh, today, I, I said I would um, uh, I'd show you all the, the other uh, present that um, the Taste of Trini bought for me and uh, you'll see with the scratch marks on it that it's already in use uh, and it's this lovely set of three uh, chopping boards which again are super portable they, they're stackable, they, they stack together and um, they're made of really good uh, dense I think it's polypropylene and they are exceptionally good cutting surfaces and also you can pick up your stuff that you cook on them and tip it straight into a pot which is really really handy I like the flexible ones for that reason and these are exceptionally good quality so uh, once again uh, dear Taste of Trini thank you very much for those and now we'll get on with the video right no doubt you've arrived at this uh, video by seeing these two beauties uh, filled up with most of what you see on the table here um, because today I'm going to make a classic beef and onion pie in fact I'm going to make two because I can let's get started right let's talk about the uh, beef um, you can you can buy the the your beef already cut up into cubes um, but I don't find that particularly good value for money you see I was able to pick up this beef roasting joint and it's a really good quality one 21 day matured beef um, it's the best part of a kilogram and it only cost me £5.26 which is I think I think is really good value I picked that up in uh, in Aldi um, and I find that that does me for a nice uh, pie filling. Uh, I'm going to cook it for quite a long time because I want to get the, the meat really tender to go in the pie and uh, we'll take it from there. So first thing I need to do is get this and the stock vegetables all chopped up uh, so we can get it cooking uh, and get stewing down that beef till it's nice and tender. Oh, I can't be bothered with the onion, I'll do it this way. So that's the uh, veg prepped up, the stock veg prepped up and uh, now we'll get on with the meat. So uh, first I'm cutting the uh, joint along its length into strips. Um, comme ça. Uh, and then I'm cutting it into pieces that are no bigger than uh, my thumb because we want it to cook and present nicely inside the pie. So I'm going to finish prepping this up uh, and then we'll get back to you. Right that's got the meat cut up into little uh, cubes about three quarter of an inch cubes and I'm just going to sprinkle on a bit of uh, flour. Just going to sprinkle on a bit of flour about a, a tablespoon of flour maybe a little bit more. Um, this is uh, just white flour, ordinary all purpose flour. It's actually strong white bread flour, but um, we don't need to pick nits. Get that out of the way. And then I'm going to just massage that into the meat. Now, the reason we do this is uh, it protects the texture of the meat while the meat is uh, browning while it's cooking off in the fat and also later on it will form part of the thickening of the pie filling of this of the sauce in the pie filling and that is now ready to fry so uh, what we'll do is we'll get uh, the camera set up over the uh, pot and we'll show you that Okay, into the pot goes a couple of tablespoons of oil 
and straight in with the meat because we've got a good strike heat going because the pot's really hot and you'll hear that sizzle as it hits. Right, I need to go and get a spoonzilla. Here's spoonzilla, spoonzilla's back, stealing the limelight yet again. I'm just gonna stir and fry this really until it's sealed off the meat. And along with that flour on the outside, that's gonna form like a seal to seal some of the juices in the meat for as long as possible. And we'll get that, keep that going for a minute or two until the meat's a little more browned and then uh, we'll pick it up again. Right, try to give you a slightly better angle on that so you're not looking at my arm all the time. If I was a southpaw like my friend Taste of Trini, you'd be able to see this a lot better because I'd be doing it with that hand. But there you go. We can't have what we are, can we? And I'm kind of limited by the constraints of this tiny little kitchen. When I get my multi-million pound studio built, of course, we'll, um, we'll be able to show you properly. Right, um, once we've got a nice seal on that meat, in go all the stock veg. And we give that a stir and we let it fry for a minute or two um, to release some of the sugars in the stock veg and some of the flavour from that onion. And you'll see right here that we're introducing a little colour as well as flavour. And unlike uh, West Indian style stews, we, we, don't, we don't generally use sugar over here to um, produce the caramel. Um, if I don't think that's brown enough at the end of this, I will probably add a little dark soy sauce to it, which will add a nice element of flavour and uh, a lot of colour. Uh, I know it's a separation from tradition, but um, I, think, I think we arrive at our cuisines by fusion. Um, and that's very, very much true in, in the Caribbean because uh, in the Caribbean you've got uh, the African, Indian, uh, native Indian, uh, British, Spanish, French, Portuguese. All those influences are actually in the food. So um, our, we arrive at our, 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 our cuisines through fusion, you know, and, and even British food, it, it will be there'll be elements of uh, going back in time, ancient Celtic uh, cookery methods and, and ingredients, um, and then Roman, and then Saxon, and then <laughs> Norman, and then uh, the Danish from, from the Vikings. So all these influences are in our, in our food. And incidentally, they're also in our language, uh, which is rather interesting if you follow that up. Right, I think at this stage, um, you notice I haven't had any, any salt at this stage, and that's because I don't want to draw too much moisture out of, out of the meat until uh, it's properly sealed. And um, I think we're now at that stage where I can smell the onion. Um, is starting to sweeten. So at this stage, I'm going to go in with some pepper and some salt. Not too much salt at first, because I, I, I really just want to get, say, a pinch of salt going in there. And I need some, and I need some black pepper. Pepper, pepper, pepper. So, plenty of pepper. I love pepper and it works so well with beef. Um, black pepper, of course. The 
British traditionally have used white pepper for centuries, but um, uh, I think really it was the advent of, uh, of the traveling cooks like Keith Floyd um, in the 80s and in the 70s and 60s with uh, Richard Hittleman, uh, the Galloping Gourmet, that we started using black pepper more uh, in our cookery. And uh, the same was true, I found, in, in Hong Kong, because the majority of the pepper used there is white pepper. Uh, but there was one really great place on Lama Island where they fried, um, they fried prawns uh, in these gigantic woks with loads and loads and loads of black pepper, um, which had the great advantage of bringing out the sweetness in the prawns, and it was absolutely fantastic. Um, so there we are. And the same is probably happening right now. It's bringing out the sweetness of the, uh, of the, the inherent sweetness of the carrots and the, and the beef and the onions. So um, that is creating some interesting flavors right there in that pot. So right now, stock. It just so happens that I have some stock made up. And this is a, a meat stock. Um, made up of uh, chicken and pork and now it's going into this beef and that turns out to be just about the right amount so if I look there it was 600 mils 600 mils what's that in the old money let's have a look it's about a pint so 600 mils about a pint in the old money and there we go and that just tops it up nicely so there we go, we've got the meat more or less covered and the element that we need to give it now, uh, boys and girls and gastronauts, is time. Um, so I'm gonna cover that with a lid, turn the heat right down and give that um, about an hour and a half, two hours, let that meat go real tender um, and thicken up slightly. So there you go, on with the lid. All right, uh, here's the uh, two pie dishes which I've, uh, I've greased uh, with a bit of butter. Right, okay, this is all about having fun. It's about eating, it's about how much you live, not how long you live. <laughs> all right, um, right, I'm gonna get some um, pastry now which I've made in the time-honored fashion of going to my local store and buying it. Um, they've got the time to do it, they make it rather well, so I buy it. I think that's a pretty good deal, don't you? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two of these rolls, because I can, and there we go. And as you see, one of those rolls will do a pie in the lid rather well. So. I think what I'll do, let's give you a bit more wide angle than that, because you need to see what's going on, don't you? Really? That's better, isn't it? Right, okay, let's go with that. And what I need is my spatula from Taste of Trini. And what I want to do is I just want to measure that up to see how much I'm going to need, because we are going to need a bit more for the inner bit. So there you go, that was simple, wasn't it? So now I take the, this bit and I press that into the pie bolt. Remember what I did with the other pies. I lift it up and drop it in rather than try forcing the other stuff from the outside. And then literally just fold that over the sides like that to form a nice pie base. Just push that into the corners, let out any trapped air that you find. And there you go. Keep the lid to one side, because we don't want that drying off, do we? Not too much. So we'll put that to one side for now. 
and then I'll do the other one. That's one done. There you go, so that's some um, uh, done and ready, pressed down, all the air pushed out. And there's one little thing I like to do in the bottom of my pies, is I just sometimes just stab the bottom like that and it, apparently it stops the pie going soggy in the bottom. I don't see any evidence of it, but I do it because I do it. So there we are, we've got two uh, pie cases set up and ready to go. Okay, I've uh, just uh, so that it doesn't all dry out and to keep any insects from getting on it, I've covered it with a little cling wrap uh, just for the time being. And the only other ingredient we'll need is an eggy weggy, and I'll show you that's just for it really dressing the edges of the pie and painting the top of the pie so it, it gives it a nice sheen. So um, I'll get back to you now once the filling is ready to go into the pies. Right, now it's time to check the meat. Let's have a look. Um, I'm just going to take a bit from the side and taste it. Mm. Okay, that's great for tender, it's just about right. Uh, nice and yielding. Right. It's not cooked to the point where it's falling apart because uh, I do like to actually have the meat pie have a little bit of texture. Um, I'm going to adjust now for um, sugar, uh, sorry for salt. And I think it needs a little bit more salt and a little bit more black pepper, a bit more crab pack jack. Get that in there. And I'll give that a stir. Right, the other thing I notice is that the uh, stock is very, very loose. So I've mixed uh, two tablespoons of flour with some water. You can also mix it with a bit of oil, but make sure you mix it so all the lumps are, are gone, and then get that in there. Give it a good old stir. We want to get that nice and thick. We want that to thicken up nicely. Right, let's talk about pie fillings. There are lots of pie fillings. Um, traditionally, the, perhaps the most popular one traditionally, probably not so much these days, uh, would have been a steak and kidney pie, which would have been chuck steak and uh, kidneys usually ox kidneys or lamb's kidneys um, mixed together in the pie. Beef and onion is very popular. Uh, more recently steak and ale pies become very popular. It's almost as if the ale has replaced the kidney in, in, in popularity. Um, other British pie fillings are very popular one is chicken and mushroom which is generally just chicken breast and mushroom. I, I personally find that rather boring, but uh, other people seem to like it. And um, in Scotland, they use um, lamb or mutton pies. Um, mutton, and I think it's mixed with oatmeal. I can't be 100% sure, but um, I might actually find out that recipe and do it, do the Scottish uh, Scotch pie at some time in the future. If you're interested in seeing that, we'll see that in the comments below, shall we? Right. Um, another filling you could use is, uh, you could just add, uh, simply add mushrooms to this one, and uh, then you'd have a, a beef and mushroom uh, pie. Um, add more onions uh, for a beef and onion uh, pie. So there we are, we've uh, added, um, the thickener to it which was just uh, flour and water and you bring it up to the desired consistency and if it doesn't come up to the desired consistency just add a little more 
and uh, I'm going to get a spoon and show you what this looks like in terms of consistency. Um, so it's like that, it's the very thick gravy and one of the reasons we, we do a thick gravy like that, A, it's delicious and tasty and the other reason is, is that once, if this pie is allowed to go cold, that sets to a nice delicious thick uh, sauce, cold sauce, uh, and, and then you can eat it as a cold pie, uh, and it's very portable and delicious. Um, most of us like to eat hot pies though, <laughs> I will confess. Um, but for a picnic, it's perfectly viable um, as a cold pie. Now all that remains is for us to transfer um, the pie filling into the pies, get the lids on and get them baking. All right, the pie filling is uh, ready. Um, and the pies, the pies bowls themselves are ready. And where all I need now is a ladle to ladle my pie filling into the pies. I like to do this rather generously. So let's get this going. And plenty of filling. Get plenty of filling in there. So a nice generously filled pie. And let's do the other one. Okay, so there we are, we have two rather generously filled pies and the next uh, process uh, will be to um, just wet the edges of these pies so that they seal nicely. And I'm doing that with a bit of beaten egg, very straightforward, get in there, just wet the edges. Don't need to be too fancy with it, just get it done. This will help form a seal for your pie. It's not too attractive when the pie bursts open and it all spills out, but that can happen and does happen. So now we take our lids and carefully drop them into place on top of the pipe and you see that fits nicely and just push that down with your fingers pulling away from the centre of the pipe. You see like that, just slightly pulling away. That stretches the top nice and tight and we'll do the same with the pie number two. And this is puff pastry, don't forget. Uh, this is puff pastry. So if you're making the pastry yourself, make sure you do a puff pastry. And what the one that particularly works well with this, uh, it, this pie is a rough puff pastry, if you know how to make that. Uh, if you don't know how to make it, um, if you look it up on, on YouTube, you will find it. Um, it's a rough puff pastry. Now, what I like to do is I like to go around the edges with a fork, like that. Just engaging each one in, in the tines of the previous one. And we go around the pie like that. Just go around the rim of the pie. And you'll see it makes for a very attractive pie. We'll speed ahead now and show you the pies all done. So there we have it.
both pies are now sealed up. Um, and what I do now is I take the back of a knife and just run it along the outside, just cutting in a downward stroke, like you see there, until we have a very professional looking pie. And, and you just need to put a couple of air holes in the top of the pie, like that. And the same with this one, same again. Very simple technique. And that leaves you with very professional looking pies. And don't forget the air holes, very important, otherwise this will all burst open and make a mess. Right, the last thing we do before putting those on a tray and into our oven is we give those a quick brush with Eggy Weggy. Uh, you can be generous with this um, because it does look rather good once finished. So get that on. And you'll see how this turns out. And keep the egg by in case you want to put a little more on during the baking process. So just keep a bit of egg on the side. And there you go, that's, it. that's them brushed and ready to go in the oven. Right, they go into a, let's get it on my pizza plate. They go, I put them on a tray and they go into an oven at 108 degrees um, Celsius, which is 350, round about 350 Fahrenheit, and they will bake for round about 40 to 45 minutes, and we shall uh, have a look at it after say 30 minutes and see how they're getting on. So they go into the oven. Well, as a master of pies, I can tell you it doesn't get much better than that. So that, my dear friends and gastronauts, is a classic British steak pie. Um, I think I'm going to cut into one let you see it. Let's do that. Give me a second. Okay. Um, let's cut into this one, shall we? Across there, can you hear that? That's the crispiness of it. Whoops. <laughs> and let's see if we can lift it away from there. And, and that, my dear friends. Classic British steak pie. Now, does that look gorgeous or what? <laughs> right, I'm going to enjoy eating that now, so uh, please forgive me.